Joining us in studio are Dale and Chabeleng, Transform RSA President, Oliver Dixon, a social political analyst, Sembi Somshengo is a complainant, Carl Niehaus is with the MKMVA and NEC member there, and Mdumisen Indoli, KwaZulu Natal ANC Provincial Spokesperson on the phone line. Good evening to all our guests and thanks so much uh, for joining us. We'll just start with you, Mr. Ndoli, that this has really put a spanner in the works uh, in in how the, uh, the leadership crisis in, in KZN has now come to the fore. Mtumisene, are you there? All right, uh, we'll come back to Mr. Mtumisene. Adil, maybe you, you can reflect on that and on, on what this means, especially for the elected conference in December. Look, in terms of the elected conference, uh, and good evening to the viewers, this was something that was almost expected, that uh, the matter was going to be taken over to the court, and the leadership battle will be decided at the court and court basis in terms of the ruling. So the ruling coming out today is not a surprise ruling. We welcome it. We are going to study the outcome of the ruling and what impact it would have. But again, this particular ruling will be anyway challenged given the fact that the court has a system by which you have, first of all, the High Court, you have the Supreme Court of Appeals, and then you have the Constitutional Court. So there will be various stages by which this matter might be actually challenged. But given the fact that this is a monumental decision, one of its first kind, which actually sets apart the issues with regards to a particular internal matter relating to a particular political environment. Remember, the ANC has never taken itself to court to go and discuss a matter of leadership decision. And here it's a first of its own kind decision that says the current ruler leadership of the ANC is an irregular, uh, what you call it, uh, illegitimate leadership and must actually sit down and they must call for a new re-election as the process by which the court has decided. This is going to cause a lot of other ructions. Remember, KwaZulu Natal is a politically unstable environment when it comes to interest of various groupings. So you're having now one group that has won the particular case. The current sitting of the group that is doing all the key work right now is the group that is currently the one that has been dominating the political space for the last two years. So you're not going to have an easy process by which it will be an accepted decision as such. There will be a contestation. And as we know already, there's an announcement that the Natal, current leadership of the ANC has has taken a decision by which they say that in the 15 days they are going to actually start the process by which they are going to appeal the decision. What are the, the chances court. of another court finding a different uh, verdict, considering that there had been allegations of vote rigging, that results were released uh, via social media even before the announcement was made, there was a reshuffle, all the, the consequences or rather the sequence of events that transpired after that? Uh, big sigh of relief for Makozi Koza, hey? because um, <laughs> now she has a bit of time to before her hearing. Look, um, this uh, what there was an irregularity as far as we can tell from the ruling and from the complaints that was laid to the court. There was an irregularity in the administrative process, right? So I hear a lot of people saying, uh, and I, I think uh, uh, Adil was trying to allude to that uh, um, with with. Uh, to some extent, is that there was an overreach of, 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 of cadres going to court, don't go to court to solve political problems. One is what uh, the backlash is. But two, the court is overreaching by deciding political problems. I don't think that's the case. The, the court is not deciding the outcome of an elective conference. The court is, 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 is adjudicating on the administrative process. And I think administrative processes, to be fair, uh, well, for democracy to be meaningful, administrative processes need to be fair. That's just how it, the electorate uh, system works. And I think if there were irregularities in the administrative process, it's okay to run to the court. But if you are just unhappy because you think you are unhappy and have no real claim, so you don't think then don't run another to court. court. Another court will, will find different, uh, if, even if... After the, the, the chances yeah. are big that the other court might actually decide. Remember, appeals are based on the merits that the case holds. In this case, they were looking at an aspect of the particular election and going to conference process. So they said the process by which it was undertaken was an irregular process. So it does not mean the current leadership is itself a wrong leadership. The court yeah. does not pronounce All right, I think, yes, I think it's, it's, it's Tembi, so I beg your pardon, um, Shengo as a complainant. We'll have a different uh, view. Uh, Tembi, so thanks so much uh, for joining us and good evening to you. You must uh, be vindicated with the outcome of uh, the court proceedings. Indeed, we, we feel very much vindicated, uh, obviously without any uh, feeling of, of triumph. Um, what is important here is that uh, as members of the African National Congress, 
uh, as one uh, analyst has correctly um, uh, put it, that uh, it's a matter of processes. If administrative processes are fraudulent and are being manipulated, people will always have um, uh, issues about that. In fact, uh, we did not just run to court. We exhausted all uh, the available avenues within the African National Congress in terms of the hierarchy of the organization, and nobody took us serious, and we therefore sought uh, a refuge at the courts. Okay, but now the, the ramification and I suppose its consequences that uh, are least of your concerns, because as you were saying, you wanted to expose uh, the rigged process or compromise elective conference uh, in 2015. Are, are you at all concerned about the ramifications of uh, this judgment? In fact, all that we, we, we want is that the ANC uh, in its pursuit of its organizational uh, programs, it must uh, ensure that all its processes are legitimate, they are clean, and they are according to the principles of the organization. They are compliant with the Constitution, with all other policies of the organization, including guidelines in particular on convening gradual meetings and conferences. Um, as, as, as such, we do believe that uh, we, we have no reason to be concerned. We have a reason to celebrate the fact that we will have credibility in the processes of the ANC going forward. That is all that we want. All right, please uh, stay on the line, Mr. Mshemo. Just a response from you, Oliver. I want to say importantly here, uh, we need to recognize that, and if we're going to be honest with ourselves, there's always dodgy stuff going on at elective conferences. This is not new. The only difference is this made it to court. And I think this is incredibly important. Why is that the case? For the first time, the, case, the court can clear out what an, at the administrative process of an electoral system needs to look like and what it cannot do. And I think to get that sort of legal clarity is important going forward. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe Adal has been in such, uh, certain situations where he can give legal opinion on it. Before but I don't know to, if it's going to overturn. Oh, I don't know if the... the, uh, the because I don't think any, against... of, any of, of us uh, No, Let's uh, get Carl Niehaus uh, on to the discussion as well. Carl, good evening to you and thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, just on the issue of uh, what Mr. Msheng was saying as, as the complaint and part of the uh, cohort or group in Guazul Natal ANC, that this is an opportunity to clean house once and for all. If you talk about organizational renewal the court will now you know this will be a hard lesson learned that number one you need to have proper audit secondly you need to uh, to to follow all the procedures tick the boxes etc all say that we cannot foresee what the Supreme Court of Appeal will rule in terms of an appeal and it is clear that the sitting provincial executive has decided that they will go on appeal so we cannot foresee that. In the meantime, I think we should express our regret that this matter has gone to court. I believe that this issue should have been dealt with politically and that political decisions with regards to what happens in the African National Congress should have been an engagement between the parties that were unhappy about this situation and they should have found political decisions. It is very unfortunate that we have a court of law now deciding about a political process for the African National Congress. This is not what should have happened. And truly, I believe that the parties themselves should have engaged with each other, yeah, also please. under the guidance of the National Executive Committee of the ANC. Yeah, please just stay on the line. Adil, I mean, the, the horse is bolted now. They've taken each other to court, as you were saying. It's unprecedented uh, in the party. Are we likely to see more floodgates or more disgruntled members uh, following the same route? Look, in terms of the follow-up of the actions of this nature, I don't think it will start happening as a trend because the ANC itself is an own self-governing machinery and it has its own self-internal processes by which this should actually give it an alarm to say internally there are processes by which must be exhausted prior to reaching a point where the factional interests within the party are now aired out at the public podium because it is bringing in what is the most critical and crucial element of our governance as well as our judiciary process into disrepute because right now people are saying probably the judge could have taken a favorable decision in order to create a factionary interest as well as spark faction fights within the movement. It is not a necessary view but this is what some of the people 
people could actually start interpreting it as. So it is not nice to have political parties take each other to courts in order to settle this kind of squabbles. Internal processes exist. They have constitutions, they have appeal boards, they have disciplinary structures, which are not actually exhausted in this case. And there is processes by which there could even be mediation as well as conciliatory processes. Yeah. This but, but shows yeah, the, that I, I internally... Mean, it's Clearly, it's there failed, is a as Mr. Michel was saying, correct. Correct. There's a big collapse of their own internal processes and administration. And it should actually give them the ANC an alarm to say they have to start self-governing because you don't want to have a situation whereby courts are starting to take political decisions and starting to actually install political leadership. You are not going to have a healthy situation in South Africa. From a transformer research point of view, we are saying we have got the levers which are quite placed within government, which are quite placed within civil society. That must be self-ruling and self-governing. You mm. do not have to have an embarrassment of this nature come out into the public podium whereby they are caught with right with, without having done their homework properly. Because here the ANC is at fault. It is not the war infections. This matter was brought before the ANC and the ANC structures and internal processes were not exhausted. And that's why the matter had to be taken out externally. Yeah. To what Mr. Mshengo the says they have actually done... No, you know, no the, it the, was the, not attended to. That is what yeah. Mr. Mshengo says. Yeah. He says they later complain, but no internal processes ensued in terms of ensuring that this matter is actually resolved. Mm. Look, I agree with, with Adil on that point of ANC not taking it. I think not that the, the processes, the internal structures have collapsed or that the processes are starting to fail. I just think they need to start taking their own internal processes serious. These are very beautifully crafted processes. As, a, as an organizational structure, the ANC is beautifully designed. Uh, you can go at any point in the ANC, due process is always respected. Uh, well, in most instances, due process is respected. But importantly, the real failure here is, 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 is the lack of leadership from where Mantashe. I think Guerre Mantashe is very often quick to respond to these things and he resolves them. Look at his, his response uh, to Ace Magashula's uh, contestation in, in, in the Free State. That was a beautiful response. Issue was resolved. He didn't give that sort of leadership in this instance. So the real person to point fingers to here is Guerre Mantashe. But importantly, I just want to debunk the idea that going to court means that you, you, you are not, you, 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 it's an embarrassment. Court is not a place of embarrassment. Going to court sometimes is a good thing, right? It shows that you have confidence in your organization to put itself out in public consideration, specifically legislative, uh, sorry, judicial public, uh, judicial consideration, which means you trust your own internal, you trust your party to withstand those sort of things. So court can be a good thing. Court can be a reconciliatory mm. body as well, if you look at it in yeah, that way. Mr. Mshengwa, just in terms of the backlash uh, so far, maybe you can give us a little bit of insight uh, with the factions within KwaZulu-Natal. What has uh, been uh, the mood? What has come out of that? Or, or is it essentially uh, just about about allowing the process to be fully ventilated? Look, um, obviously there will be those who are unhappy about the outcome and there will be those who be, who feel vindicators, uh, as it were, but at the end of the day, what counts is what is good for the ANC, what is good for the country. What is good for the country is for the national leadership to begin to provide leadership um, it's true, going to court is not a crime. Going to court should not uh, be an embarrassment, should not be a shame. But we should not even get there if we were to have perhaps uh, complaints and appeals mechanisms within the ANC that are fully functional and that are fully responsive to uh, the issues that are raised by structures of the ANC. And for me, um, we, we have an opportunity as the ANC in Wazul Natal to go back to basics um, as Carl Nehaus has said, perhaps it was unfortunate that this matter had to go to court, but what is fortunate now is that the court has said we did not live up to our own constitution and we must therefore begin to live up to the, uh, 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 the spirit of our own constitution and do things according to the book because we know exactly what is good that we should do and we know what is wrong that we should not do. All right, there's the elective conference coming uh, in December. Many saying that that might have to be postponed because now you, will, you would have to have an elective conference in the province or maybe the reversal of the reshuffle uh, that, uh, that, that was experienced. How do you see this playing out, Mr. Mshengu? Look, the, the forthcoming national conference in December 
uh, obviously they will t- be determined by branches of the ANC and those branches must not be bogus branches that are, are, are created in the middle of the night uh, in the absence of anyone. We know that there have been signature campaigns in some parts of the, of the province and we want those things to be reversed. We want proper branches of the ANC that will uh, be owned by members themselves so that uh, there is credibility in decisions that are taken by the African National Congress. So um, in terms of the operations of the government, uh, we believe that the deployments of the ANC are done by leadership in office and therefore when the leadership in office is declared invalid, it means there has to be a discussion. Uh, that discussion must not be disruptive of the uh, state institutions because we do not want to see a collapse of government. We have been given a mandate by the electorate of KwaZulu Natal to lead this province and we shall do so without being disruptive. Yes, there are internal matters and we shall uh, attend to those internal matters um, uh, as matured leaders without necessarily uh, causing fractures uh, in government. Uh, Adil, your, your response to that? You see, you're, you're, you're causing two leadership structure to actually go on a warring faction with each other. The court did not pronounce which leader should lead at this stage. They said that they have to revisit and make sure that they correct the mistakes done during the process for election of leadership. Now you're going to split, which is not really good for the country, to have a split within a political space because it could spark all other unnecessary civil unrest, which we don't need at this stage. South Africa needs to be at a peaceful level. That is what I said to you, court is the last option of exhaustion when it comes to redress to a situation. In this case, the ANC needs to make sure that it intervenes urgently, it brings about the peace that is required within the political space, and not only the political space because it is going to start frizzling out and then going out of context whereby it will become personal. The leadership challenge right now in KwaZulu Natal, the leaders of KwaZulu Natal presently have not been outstaged. It's still a process by which the court has pronounced until the final decision has been made to disband, according to the ANC, But the doesn't it question, leadership. though, the legitimacy of the leadership no, no, in the, the by virtue said, of the fact that the voting process in itself wasn't uh, done accordingly, there wasn't proper auditing of uh, delegates, uh, and that, you know, results were released before the announcement was even made? The, How does that legitimize the leadership of the ANC? The current leadership there? still stands until they go back through the court processes. Remember, court processes gives you an appeal process. Until the appeal is thrown out and not actually regarded and actually said this is the final court order. No, I'm saying back up. Mm. I mean, no, in the from the leadership point of view, no. the ANC has yeah. now the obligation to come in and stabilize the current environment because there is a leadership turmoil right now. There's one faction that says they are going to lead. There's another faction that they say they are the current leaders. You have this crisis that must be managed and actually I, I, be put I, yeah. down. Maybe no, I'm not putting a... T- right. Yeah. He's, impo- he's right. It needs to be managed. But importantly here, the thing about political uh, 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 interventions is that a political intervention is is not entirely an objective intervention. The thing about a judicial intervention is that it's an objective intervention in that instance. Well, bias towards fairness, right? And this is why court processes are so nice to, 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 to listen to uh, and to adhere to because they're objective, right? Uh, this is why going to court, so, you know, if, 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 if they, if they s- uh, settled for a political solution, the, the credibility of this leadership would have been questioned for as long as this leadership existed, right? But if you go for a judicial intervention <laughs> where there's a court ruling, it's objective. The credibility of the leadership coming in will not be questioned. So for the sake of I'm credibility... I'm saying the current leadership, though. Mr. Mshengo, do you recognize the leadership? Obviously, you don't. So I'm saying under the, the, the circumstances now of uh, the, the, the uh, Peter Marisburg High Court finding that the election process itself was null and void and unlawful, do you, how do you move on in such an untenable position where you clearly don't recognize the leadership there and it's now been endorsed by the courts? Obviously, our, our primary prayer was to uh, ask the court to declare the uh, current PEC invalid. And we have been granted that. And uh, I, I must say uh, categorically that we do not recognize them as leadership as, 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 as of today. Because that's what the court has said. It said the conference itself was unlawful and the decisions taken uh, by that conference are invalid. So it means the current PEC is illegitimate. In fact, there is no PEC in Wazul Natal. 
And all that we are asking for politically is for the um, headquarters of the ANC, national leadership of the ANC, to come in and stabilize uh, the province by appointing a neutral task team that is going to ensure that processes of the organization uh, are, are not biased to anybody but biased to the constitution and, and all uh, standing orders of the ANC. Um, going forward, all that we want is, is stability of the organization so that that will then uh, give confidence to the investors so that we have uh, people coming to invest in the province. People need jobs. Uh, 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 people need uh, uh, certainty about their future. And if, if we have an unstable ANC, people will not be certain of their future. And as such, uh, the growth of the province uh, will be compromised. Yeah. To say on the line, uh, Mr. Niehaus, your, your reaction that you, technically uh, the uh, PEC doesn't exist, there's a, a rudderless uh, leadership uh, vacuum in KZN at the moment. It's entirely incorrect. The PEC exists, the PEC has the right to appeal, and until the appeal process is exhausted, the PEC is in power. So legally, what we have just been told is incorrect. What is important, and I really want to make a call to all the parties that are involved here, is that we should try and find a political solution rather than trying to stick to this legal and court action. And while we do this, while we try to find a political solution, it is very important that everyone, including those who today benefited from this court ruling, have to commit themselves to participate in a process that will lead to the ANC being placed first, to work for peace, and to make sure that the African National Congress will come out of this united. That is the essential issue, and that is why I've called consistently that we need to make use of a political process rather than the but, legal but, but, but is, is it unity at all costs, though, if uh, Mr. Niehaus says the ANC needs to come first in, in the whole democratic centralism, you know, and the majority draw? Is, is it really just about unity at all costs? The issue of unity is already there. You can hear the people who are actually engaging, even including the provincial spokesperson, who actually says that they are quite happy. But the decision has not been made to disband. People must understand and not be misinformed about the truth. What Oliver says that there is no leadership is actually false information. The leadership stands as it is until the court processes has been exhausted. Remember, the appeal is an opportunity awarded by courts to the person who has lost Very briefly, to be given Oliver, the opportunity sorry, of, to yes. finalize yeah. the matter. Look, You'll As say. it currently stands, today, this minute you and I talking to each other, that leadership does not exist because the appeal has not yet been rendered. Until the appeal actually is rendered, then the, 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 the halt on a disbandment technically takes yeah, place. Yeah, so you're going right to have to have this You have to first offline. appeal. To <laughs> we're going to have to have that uh, yeah. uh, offline. But uh, again, for you at home, thanks indeed for staying with us. We had in studio Adil Nchabiling, Transform RSA President, Oliver Dixon, Social Political Analyst, Stembi So Mshengu is a complainant with the ANC in KwaZulu Natal. They uh, came out victorious today. And Carl Niehaus is with the MKVA uh, as the NEC member. And I'm Dumisen Indoli, who couldn't join us, unfortunately, so we thank him in absentia. But uh, you at home, do stay tuned for the latest uh, news update just after this.